effort to bring uh, uh, prime uh, down to, to the earth, down to the ground, to the real business and real communities, concrete communities. Our people uh, responded positively to the initiative from our colleague uh, Lutz Schlange from the University of Applied Sciences in Kur, Switzerland, to launch the first Responsible Management Education Research Conference in 2014, and from then on, our working group was one of the co-organizers. Co uh, the first uh, conference had the title The Future of Responsible Management Education, the second one in Egypt, in Cairo, uh, hosted by American University in Cairo, was on inclusive business. The third one in Krems, in Austria, was uh, uh, about uh, linking uh, SDGs uh, and management education in universities. Last year in Curitiba, Brazil, we had the fourth event. The, top, the topic, the general theme was uh, new research questions for advancing the SDGs. And uh, now the fifth one is, uh, I already uh, mentioned, leadership development for advancing the SDGs. We also had, uh, had uh, our workshops, meetings, planning sessions at different uh, conferences like uh, global forums, summits, and other events organized by Prime. We also uh, participated in conferences organized by other networks like Academy of Management in Boston, when we uh, had uh, where, where we had and when we had uh, an all academy theme on uh, uh, on, uh, on on poverty uh, aspects of informal economy. We also had another one in Urim, Warsaw, in two thousand fifteen. But also in conferences, congresses, forums organized by prime regional chapters uh, or uh, our working group members and, and partners. But here are uh, two, uh, now I'm turning to um, uh, publishing activity. The first publication was uh, the report on fighting poverty, uh, the report on the survey that we presented in Rio Plus 20 conference, the global forum in 2012. So fighting poverty through management education, challenges, opportunity, solution. And an, addition, an additional material was a collection of best practices and inspirational solution for fighting poverty through management education, a, compend, a compendium of teaching resources, which is in fact the basis uh, for uh, the current project or an element of the current project on, on toolkit development. The books. Uh, uh, following the Academy of Management uh, in 2012 in Boston, we were invited to publishing to uh, organize publishing a book on, uh, on, on, on poverty management education. And then jokingly or not, we said, we can uh, do it, but only if we make two books. And they said, why two books? Well, we said we need two. One is on why to integrate poverty into management education. And the other one would be on how to do it. So these two books are uh, our uh, responses to these uh, two uh, questions. And if there are more, uh, if there are questions on the content uh, uh, of the books, I can uh, share with you later on. Then, following our approach uh, to, to, to develop partnerships, dialogue, and collaboration with other entities within Prime and externally, we uh, 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 launched a cross-working group uh, publishing program on uh, integrating sustainability into A, business and management practice, and B, into uh, responsible management education. So the title of the first one is Beyond the Bottom Line, just uh, to, to deliver the main message for businesses. But later on, uh, I will say this is also a key message for business schools. And redefining success as a message for business schools, but again, very important message to business. And now, as I mentioned, we are working on two uh, joint books, uh, again, uh, anti-corruption, gender equality, and our working group on uh, uh, 
sustainable, sustainable development. One is on global champions of sustainable development, and the other one is on struggles and successes in pursuit of uh, sustainable development. Why I said beyond the bottom line and redefining success refer to both businesses and business schools. Here are some lessons from the businesses that we learned from the book. In order to be successful, you to address sustainability, uh, the 10 principles of UN Global Compact and SDGs uh, uh, more broadly, uh, companies tend to uh, embrace UNGC principles, focus on concrete issues and problems, adapt business models and strategies, uh, develop or stimulate uh, enhance internal engagement where the role of leaders is crucial and also uh, enhance uh, and, uh, and uh, stimulate external engagement and create a partnership so these messages are the same in fact for business schools so we can learn from businesses perhaps even more that they can learn from us uh, and the books, all these books, poverty-related, sustainability-related, and now sustainable development champions, indicate that it is possible and it is viable to, to achieve this triple bottom line. Uh, in other words, to have economically viable, sound uh, economic uh, activity, uh, environmentally friendly, but also socially responsible. In other words, uh, something that can uh, satisfy profit, but also people and planet. Very important uh, part of our uh, uh, effort was, was aimed at engaging youth and students. We had partners like Challenge Future. Uh, we had uh, uh, we sponsored one of the team and had a judging panel and joint workshop with the winners of this competition. Uh, we had uh, four international student essay competition and now the fifth one is coming, as I already mentioned. We took part in Babson student competition in Prime, a very interesting project and I'm glad that uh, some professors uh, who participated with their students are in the webinar. Camino de Santiago, uh, organized by our working group member Ana Nieto from Helsinki, España, and also supported by uh, United Nations World uh, Tourism Organization and uh, Compostela University, a group of universities. Uh, a fascinating project, students uh, uh, walking along the Camino de Santiago, five days, uh, 115, 120 kilometers, and conference where they presented their learning and their suggestions how to develop uh, tourism or how to integrate uh, human rights uh, into and other uh, values into uh, responsible management education and business and as i said the global survey on student voice you are kindly uh, requested to share survey questionnaires with your own students but also with uh, your uh, network. Now, about the business school perception of global crisis. Our working group, in fact, the, the members of the working group, it was not a working group project, but the members did a school, uh, did a, a, a survey for CIMAN, uh, Association of Business Schools in, in, located in Slovenia. Uh, in 2009, what, uh, business schools uh, response to global crisis. And we asked professors and business school administrators to define or to, 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 to express their views on, on the nature of the crisis. Was it financial, economic, or something else? And they all said, most of them said, yeah, it is financial, but it's much more than that. It's economic, it's about corporate accountability, but above all, they said it, it is ethical and moral. Now, we asked them uh, then, what is uh, the shame of blame that uh, goes to business schools because they are the ones that create the leaders. And strangely enough, the answer was no, we are not to blame. Why not? We asked them in different conferences and said, because this is what they said, uh, because uh, 
students who come to our schools come with already uh, established form, values and attitudes, which we cannot change. But if you look at the business school uh, materials, you can easily see that all of them say yes, we provide knowledge, but more importantly, we give them, uh, give our students skills, but most importantly, they say we provide new horizons of thinking, new values, and so on. So, in a way, their response uh, related to the blame is some sort of uh, hypocrisy, if you wish. Maybe I'm too critical. Now, why? Uh, uh, we understand, and our surveys have uh, shown clearly, that there is a business of business education. Now, this business has its business uh, aspects on the left-hand side and educational aspects. So, on vision, mission, strategy, innovation, risk, and so on, and educational aspects, programs, processes, actors, organizational and, and institutional. In other words, on the left-hand side, it is about earning, and on the right-hand side, it is about learning. What we see in many business schools, not in all, but in many around the globe, is that the L from the learning has disappeared. So it's more about uh, earning. So there is a need for innovation, and uh, if I can share immediately a key message related to innovation, of course, there is a risk uh, associated to any innovation, but the major risk is not to innovate at all. But if you innovate, then you cannot innovate only in one aspect, for instance, to change programs. If you change the programs, you need to change processes that uh, poses new requirements for actors, new institutional and uh, organizational arrangements. But in order to harmonize all the I personally believe, and also there are, uh, this is supported by the, by the faculty who, who responded to our surveys, that faculty development is the key. Now, about uh, the question, uh, I'm afraid I'm a bit late, but I will try to go fast. Uh, Ira mentioned that this consortium is about challenges and needs. What were the challenges identified in our two global surveys in two 2012 and last year 2017. More or less, they are the same. But this is not bad news because it is logical that these challenges will be there for a while or maybe even for forever. The good news is that many of these challenges have found solutions and uh, many schools have turned challenges into opportunities. So you see uh, some of the challenges. Some of them are gradually disappearing. For instance, external incentives from the major international accreditation and ranking system and schemes. This is not such a big uh, challenge because major international associations, uh, accreditation bodies have included uh, uh, responsible, uh, I mean, aspects of responsible management education into the accreditation criteria. Also, relevant research and publishing. You can see from our uh, research publishing, but uh, we are only small segment within Prime and externally. There are new outlets where you can publish uh, uh, relevant, but also rigorous uh, research. So uh, there are, uh, of course, silo mentality on, on all these uh, are, are there, but as I said, uh, diminishing to some extent or dealt with in a relative manner. Solution, close to home. So start with, with a small step. Don't wait. Don't expect a big uh, uh, help from uh, external environment. Uh, if it is difficult to, to introduce new things into already overpacked curriculum, which is the case almost everywhere, then you can try with co-curricular activities. There is a, a heavy emphasis, and it seems not only to be uh, popular, but highly effective, emphasis on action, service, experiential uh, learning projects. There are newly created courses, there are requests 
uh, mandatory minors, uh, certificates, radiation requirements. There are specific strategies for legitimizing the, the topic. And we are glad to see that participation in Prime it has also been uh, recognized as one of the solutions that help to integrate not only poverty, but also other uh, uh, elements of responsible management education into, into the education uh, program processes uh, and so on. And this is good news if we know that a Prime Network is uh, more than 700 uh, uh, business schools from uh, 90, 90, 90, 90 countries from all over the world. New opportunities, create a strong, compelling business and educational case, find and leverage champions, because our research has shown that the two key components of success uh, within business schools are either to have a, a champion, a local champion, or a support from the dean or uh, president, or ideally both, to have champions, but also to have strong support. To change stakeholders' uh, attitude, to share best practices, to find the right vocabulary, because as I mentioned in the beginning, sometimes the, the, the vocabulary creates a, a misunderstanding and you need to find a proper vocabulary uh, that is relevant or that resonates with either businesses or, or, or public authorities, public administration, and so on. Closing, closer working relationships with corporations, and of course, uh, new teaching uh, materials, which also presume uh, new research. Now, some findings, encouraging findings from the uh, survey uh, in 2017. I mentioned in the first survey, 75% believed uh, that uh, Poverty is legitimate. That is personal view. At the level of schools, uh, faculty are somehow uh, more skeptical. They believe they are convinced, but some school, but their schools not that much. Although in total, uh, uh, majority of schools uh, really uh, considers uh, poverty as a, a legitimate topic. As for the SDGs, again, good news. Uh, as the 84 uh, percent uh, indicate that uh, uh, it is important uh, for business schools to help uh, achieve the SDGs uh, overall. What has repeatedly come out from our surveys, conferences, publications, books, whatever activity we, we had, and in our is that each SDG is important in, in itself. And there are 17 of them, as you know. But equally important is that they also strongly believe and are convinced that all these SDGs are mutually connected. So you cannot deal with one forgetting about uh, the, the others. And that is good news for collaboration among all st stakeholders, not only within the private community. And last point, and that will be my final uh, message, we uh, need uh, to change uh, many things. And whatever we do as businesses or business schools, or even as individuals, there is certain philosophy of, of, of what we do, how we do things. That's and I always use a parallel with philosophy because philosophy has five branches. Logic, aesthetics, ethics, organization of state, and metaphysics. What we are seeing mainly both in businesses and in management education, and frankly speaking, in many of our personal lives, is only logic and organization, meaning structures, system, and, and so on. So the numbers, the, the bottom line, and the, the quantitative aspect. We somehow tend to forget or neglect aesthetics, the beauty of what we do, and that is very important, the beauty, the aesthetics, and related to it is ethics. 
there has been always, and I think it will be forever, a question on whether ethics should be, or related subjects like sustainability and so on, should be a standalone course or courses, or, or it or they should be integrated into all other courses. My personal answer to this is yes. I mean, this needs to be a standalone, but also integrated in all business uh, disciplines or business segments in, in, in the uh, operating business. Why? It's the same as mathematics. Mathematics is standalone, but also integrated in all engineering, scientific, and other courses. So business ethics, sustainability, CSR, and all this should be a lenses, a framework conceptual to look at all other. And last, I'm using it only uh, as an excuse, the metaphysics. Metaphysics uh, is a, a branch that uh, addresses the, the question of purpose, of why. And I think uh, this is a, a, a key uh, question. Uh, what is the purpose of business? What is the purpose of management education? And if you wish also, what is the purpose of our own life? If uh, this summary of the great effort of our working group uh, uh, has contributed uh, to inspiring you to, to, to think and reflect even more than you normally do about the purpose of what you do or what your uh, clients and stakeholders do, then I believe this uh, modest presentation had uh, its own purpose and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Milenko, thank you very much. You're way too modest. That was an extraordinary presentation and you covered a lot of ground, a lot of food for thought. Much appreciated. The good news is that uh, about uh, 15 minutes into the presentation, I was able to resolve the technical issue with the GoToMeeting platform. And so most of it was uh, captured in the recording and fortunately the attendees and those who were not able to attend today will be able to um, review your presentation through the video link. What I'm going to ask you to do, and hopefully you have the time for this after we take a couple of questions, is to make sure for the sake of completeness that we've captured all your slides in the recording. I am going to ask you to go back to the beginning of your uh, slide deck and maybe we'll do uh, a a quick um, uh, run through the key points from the first 10 or 12 slides. That way we'll be sure that everyone had a feel for uh, the full extent of your presentation. But before we do that, um, we still have many attendees online. I'm not seeing questions or comments in the chat box yet. Uh, but this is uh, an opportunity for attendees who are still on the line to raise some questions or comments uh, for you. Let me start then by asking you a question. Uh, one of your uh, slides in the closing segment talked about a survey result from uh, faculty uh, who uh, overwhelmingly uh, agreed that there was a role for management education in advancing the sustainable development goals. And, you know, that is a very reassuring result for us all, I'm sure. Uh, but I am wondering if, even on an anecdotal basis, you have come across some examples of how business schools are uh, incorporating that into the curriculum, that meaning um, uh, approaches for advancing uh, the SDGs. So I'll uh, 
turn it back to you for a moment to respond to that question and we'll see if anything else comes in in the chat box, Malenko. Can I try? Yes, go ahead, Malenko. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for, for this question because uh, uh, it is, in fact, uh, uh, can we show, can we demonstrate, you know, whether uh, this faculty in their schools uh, walk the talk? And uh, I can tell you that they do, at least those that uh, uh, are uh, within this uh, prime community, but not only them because there are good examples uh, from other schools that uh, are not signatories of Prime at all, uh, but they uh, have dramatically uh, uh, increased the, uh, the component, the social component in their, uh, and environmental component in their uh, management uh, teaching. I would like to, to stress what we learned from this side that are uh, sharing information on progress uh, as well as from our books, surveys, uh, the success stories from our surveys, that the best examples are uh, could be encountered in those schools uh, which have uh, uh, changed or adopted their mission statement. So if the mission statement recognizes the importance of sustainability then the rest goes relatively easy because faculty departments researcher everyone students they can relate and say okay this is part of the mission on top of that there are uh, business schools who uh, uh, formulated uh, this mission statement also uh, to respond or to resonate with some country or national objectives and we can find good examples of this particularly I would say in Latin America and uh, if we have uh, uh, here Consuelo uh, Garcia de la Torre, uh, de la Torre uh, from uh, uh, Tec de Monterrey in Mexico uh, I think uh, it would be good if she could uh, share uh, her experience, but the mission statement uh, uh, is very, uh, very important. In addition, I would like to uh, to say that, for instance, I mentioned the books, but didn't go into the details. In the book, Redefining Success, Integrating Sustainability into Management Education, there is a very, it's a fascinating chapter, the prime curriculum tree, uh, developed by our friend, he's not working group member, uh, is active in prime, Alex Hope, who uh, developed the, the tree with roots, with trunk, with branches and leaves, uh, each of them answering uh, the key questions. And the roots, the first question is why? Why we integrate? Once we know why we want to integrate, then it's relatively, it's much easier what how and then when and where. So I would say mission statement uh, is the key, but it's also the key uh, for, uh, for businesses. You know. Is it only uh, shareholders or is it also stakeholders and addressing some needs that are uh, un still unmet either by other businesses or by society as whole? Well. I'm not sure whether uh, I answered, but uh, uh, many, many, many examples. Very good, Malenko. That, that was a, a, a very useful answer, focusing on uh, those business schools that have adjusted their mission statement. I, I think that is a good indicator uh, for us to look for. What, I see that you've uh, moved your slide deck back to the beginning. And if uh, I could ask you, um, to pretend as though I've just completed a wonderful introduction for you and uh, begin 
your presentation with uh, the high points of the first 10 or 12 slides. That way the recording will capture the full range of your comments. I, I don't want to impose upon you to do the full uh, version again, but as long as you're uh, you show each slide and offer a comment on each slide. I think that will um, help those who review the uh, the balance of the recording. Is that okay, Malenko? Okay. So the first one was uh, about the, the wealth uh, distribution. That uh, the few uh, and fewer and fewer rich and more and more uh, poor uh, uh, and uh, a paradox, I don't know, development paradox, if you increase uh, only 75%, uh, 75 cents per day from $1.25 per day to 2.0, you get 1 billion more under the, the poverty line. Then the second is uh, content, so I talk about the future, about the past, some learnings from faculty uh, uh, and students and youth uh, and uh, focus on business school on challenges opportunities and uh, solutions uh, in the uh, current and upcoming activities I tried to mention some of the activities that may potentially attract uh, faculty attending this uh, uh, webinar to join our working group uh, either to benefit a little bit or to contribute much more because uh, what we do is mainly and exclusively by the contribution of our enthusiastic uh, members so it's about uh, a toolkit project global survey on student voice uh, ongoing joint book project symposium that will take place at URAM 2018 in East Iceland, RME uh, research conference in, in Germany, and international student essay competition. About our working group, I mentioned 181 members from 150 institutions in uh, 55 countries around the globe. We are part of the UN uh, initiatives, UN Global Compact and Prime. Uh, both uh, both these networks, uh, as well as our working group, now focus on sustainable development goals. Uh, whatever we do is a different level, is, is always discussed at individual, school level, a group of schools and Prime as, as a whole. And we, as a working group, have some uh, specific work methods, very important, are uh, internal and external dialogue, like this uh, webinar is uh, a, a form of external and uh, as well. We ask our questions about the priorities, areas that they would like to address and also modalities of uh, work. We published some scholarly articles, global surveys, and uh, in, in the rest of the presentation I have tried to present some major learning from uh, the surveys, conferences, uh, and publications that our work, uh, our working group has uh, produced uh, so far. Very good, Malenko. I think the balance of it we were able to pick up and record in its entirety. And uh, with that recap, it has uh, spurred uh, at least one other question to come in from our friend Kent Fairfield. Uh, the question is, we know that intense poverty has a big effect on prosperity in virtually all segments of world population, including civic unrest, terrorism, emergency efforts, etc. What can be done to persuade our colleagues in quantitative disciplines to see the legitimacy of widespread poverty? Uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, uh, this uh, quantitative focus is uh, still dominant. You know, 
but as one of our uh, uh, respondents to our survey, when we asked why, I mean, not only is it legitimate, but also why, what is the argument for, then uh, he or she said, if uh, businesses are about wealth uh, creation, then poverty eradication is wealth uh, uh, now, you asked about this new phenomena in one of our books, I think it was Social Responsive Organization and the Challenge of Poverty, uh, there was a chapter on, on difficulties that businesses face in, uh, in daily practices if they are uh, located in conflict zones like uh, Western Bank and Gaza. And then there was a strong message, you know, uh, that uh, the, the businesses should be free uh, to really not only to, to, to do their business, but also to contribute uh, acting as a, a factor of, of peace. And now we see all this migration uh, from the events that perhaps could have been prevented there was more economic and social development there. And when it, we talk about uh, social development, I can say that our, our, our books and our stories also emphasize the, not the role of businesses, because they are really key social agents, but also public administration. So uh, we need to put together all these stakeholders and uh, to change the language. I think I mentioned changing the language, the vocabulary. We should speak the language uh, also of uh, quantitative disciplines, you know, to convince them that uh, new horizons, new all avenues for numbers and for quantitative impact can be achieved through uh, qualitative uh, change. Very good. Thank you, Malenko. Um, I'm not seeing anything else in the chat box at this point. So if uh, you would like to wrap up with a few closing words and um, uh, we will uh, begin to close the proceedings for today. Um, uh uh, well, what I can say is that um, the, uh, it's already 10 years. Uh, we are the oldest or the first working group established in Prime. It's uh, 10 years behind us. Uh, I don't know whether it sounds immodest. We have shown some results, but we are aware that it's much more in front of us. In our own mission statement, the working group uh, defined, uh, you know, the mandate for how long it will be active. And we said we will be active as long as there is poverty in, in this world. So I leave up to you to, uh, to judge whether it is a, a short term uh, orientation or unfortunately, uh, a long-term one. Uh, everything that uh, we produced resulted from enthusiasm and contribution of uh, our uh, working groups. And we have been gradually growing and we uh, highly welcome uh, new members or we welcome people who will collaborate uh, with us and us in the working group uh, are learning about the existence of this sustainability uh, curriculum consortium was a great discovery because I think uh, you share uh, my belief that somehow we look like uh, natural partners like there are uh, other networks that we should also both of us collaborate with like bottom of the pyramid, UN Global Compact, UNDP, and so on. 
uh, with all of them we uh, collaborate. What we have achieved was only learning from the others and developing a continuous dialogue, uh, sharing and, uh, and uh, joining forces together. Thank you, Milenko. I really uh, appreciate the kind words and speaking for a sustainability curriculum consortium. Uh, we not only thank you for today's presentation, but we look forward to further collaboration. And I'm sure I speak uh, for everyone um, uh, on the line and uh, those who are part of your prime working group, the anti-poverty working group. We all thank you for your leadership over the years on this important topic. And so with that, uh, thanks again, Milenko, and um, thank you to all the attendees who have stuck with us to the end here. Again, my apologies for some of the technical glitches, but I think we've done a good job in circling back and capturing the full range of thoughts that Malenko has presented. With that, I am signing off for today. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thanks again to you and all the...